In the year 2000, Eminem would unleash his own cartoon to the world, The Slim Shady Show. Full of all of his iconic voices, edgy humor, and of course, music, all from the Slim Shady EP and Marshall Mathers LP era. So, today, sit back as we look back at one of the craziest cartoons to ever grace the world, The Slim Shady Show. The Slim Shady Show was a series of animated cartoons that were first broadcast as a web series in 2000. A year later, in 2001, the show was broadcast on Fox and due to popular demand was released on DVD shortly after. Each episode was approximately 5 minutes in length and focused on the fictional adventures of Eminem's alter egos, Slim Shady, Marshall Mathers, and Ken Kniff. He wasn't alone in this venture though. The series was directed by Mark Brooks and Peter Gilstrap of Gifted Men Productions and was produced by Eminem himself alongside Paul Rosenberg and Stuart Paul. Most of the characters were voiced by Eminem himself too, with contributions from the directors and other people in M's life such as Paul Rosenberg and Exhibit. Due to the show's explicit nature, it received an OFLC classification of R18+. The two things anyone will note about this show is, well, the animation style. It is what it is. And how the show's dialogue is insanely crude and obscene. Pretty much every episode has at least one scene where they take a shot at some actor, musician, or politician, and the show is not afraid to show insane homophobia, sexism, and acts of domestic violence. However, this was all on brand for Eminem around the time. He was the self-proclaimed king of controversy in the 2000s, and looking back, I think most people would agree. I mean, even being born in 2001 for me, I remember growing up and hearing and seeing so many things about Eminem on the radio and TV. Whether it was something he said, some beef he was in, his on and off relationship with his baby mama Kim, or his daughter Haley, he was always saying something that it seemed the mainstream media cared about. I mean, he literally talks about it in the song The Way I Am. But the Slim Shady show was special, because even though it was a big thing, especially at the time, it's something that's not part of the mainstream Eminem or even hip hop lore. It managed to stay a nice little hidden gem in the Eminem community. So with all that being said, let's go and deep dive into the actual show itself. Right off the bat, we get a catchy old school cartoon sounding theme song, to which ends with some shady saying, Hey yo, what's cracking, bitch? The first episode is named The Party Crashers, and right off the bat we meet pretty much the entire main cast, Marshall, Big D, Ken Kniff, Dave, and Sue. They're arguing about something that they lost earlier, when our boy Slim Shady comes and flips through the window. Here's where we find out they lost a basketball game, and Slim has an idea to crash the party to get back at them. We get our first tidbit in Eminem War here, as we see his mom face down in her bed literally pissing herself, while Shady steals money and Viagra from her bureau. On the way, they stop at a convenience store, where Leonardo DiCaprio just happens to be chilling outside. Shady and Big D talk shit about him before they beat him up. They keep driving, and we see a sign that says they're in Southwest Park, while throwing a beer bottle at a bus full of special needs kids, causing them to crash and drown in a river. It then also magically turns into winter somehow, and they finally pull up to the party where we find out it's all South Park characters who had beat them. Slim Shady then gives everyone the Viagra, telling them it's ecstasy, and all hell breaks loose. One of the kids eats a laxative filled chocolate bar. Shady had set up Marshall and a cheerleader in the closet, which is where the laxative filled boy goes to shit all over while they're having sex. Meanwhile, Ken Kenneth is literally just trying to hook up with any little boy. They eventually leave and kidnap Kenny in the process, obviously, and when they get back home, Matt Damon and Ben Affleck are just standing outside their trailer, and the episode ends. The next episode, Plexi Max Extravaganza, right where the previous one left off. Shady and Big D get into it with Matt Damon and Ben Affleck, and eventually kill Affleck with an Oscar. Oh, Kenny also took a bong rip and died by the way, to which causes Mr. T and the A-Team to come rescue him. Everyone chills back inside when they see a commercial for a Pristina Gagulera concert at the Pleximax. Marshall really wants to go because she thinks she's hot, so Shady and the gang agree. They get to the concert where the rest of the episode is pretty much just them waiting for her to come on while throwing some punches at her character. The only other interesting thing happening is Ken who finds out there's a monster truck rally going on which claims to have lots of male energy, and that gets him going. He meets a guy named Jeffrey who says they can take Ken and the gang to see Pristina at the mall straight up. 
which gets everyone excited and the episode ends there. The next episode, Dyke Hill Malls, starts with them at the front of the line for the Pristina Gagular meet and greet. Shady starts giving Marshall some pretty, uh, well, just straight up sexist advice on how to get in bed with Pristina, which is by getting up there and putting his balls on the table and telling her to sign these, which is exactly what he does. Except she's not actually signing anything, it's a guy in front of her with a stamp of her autograph. So Marshall gets his balls straight up stamped, which causes him to faint. Meanwhile, the rest of the gang goes outside the mall to harass Everlast. Marshall comes back outside and tells Shady it didn't go well for him, so Shady says he'll handle it. He beats up her bodyguard to talk to her, but she doesn't reply to him at all, which causes Shady to get mad and rip her head off, only to find out she's a robot. He takes her head as a trophy, and Shady and Marshall walk into the distance as the episode ends. Episode 4 is titled Movie Star Marshall, and starts off with the gang going to a rave. Here, they meet Johnny 8-Ball, who is just a massive cokehead. They then get into it with some rapper that I think is supposed to be Mace? Maybe one of you will know. That's when a movie producer comes up to Shady and Marshall and offers them a deal. The crew goes to the studio lot where Shady tells Marshall to go into his trailer to get with some groupies. Marshall and Dave get chased into the trailer by a group of girls. While Dave keeps watching them through the window, Marshall actually goes on a bit of a philosophical thought here, talking about what makes somebody better than somebody else. I mean, what makes one person better than another person just because he's seen by more people? Uh-huh. I mean, most of these actors, models, they never went to a top college. They, they never do anything for anybody. Yeah. What about doctors, architects, fine literature? Why don't we value that? Yeah. Dave, do you like to suck huge gorilla cock? You like to smoke cock, don't you? Sure. He realizes that Dave isn't listening to him at all, and eventually just opens the door to unleash the mob of girls on them, who pretty much just assault them. While that's happening, Shady and Big D meet Fred Savage and roast him until he runs off. Marshall gets done the best 5 seconds of his life, his words not mine, and they go to set to start shooting. Marshall doesn't do well and eventually takes Shady's advice from earlier and throws a tantrum on set. The director loves it though, and the episode ends with his co-star begging to get into his trailer. The next episode, titled Slim Shank Redemption, starts out with the gang in prison. Big D takes over the narrator, and we get to see a shady version of Shawshank Redemption. Kinda. The story starts out with Shady throwing hamburgers at his teacher's chalkboard so he can break the rest of the gang out of school, because something is going down in town. They walk over to a restricted area, hop the fence to find a cave. They go in and see a bunch of barrels full of old movies and music that the US is trying to bury to forget about. Pretty much, this is just them roasting stuff that they didn't like at the time. They eventually get caught by the Secret Service and get thrown in prison. They meet the leader of a gang where they try to score some weed and a beanie for Ken. They won't give Ken a beanie, so he goes apeshit on the gang leader and steals his. This makes Ken kinda badass and he starts walking by different cells. One where we see Eminem is locked up. He tells Ken he's not even supposed to be here yet and we'll see him in a minute. <clears throat> Who's got the juice now? Yo, I ain't even supposed to be in here yet. I ain't been convicted, I'll see y'all in a minute. And in the next cell over, Ken meets Daryl Strawberry, the famous baseball player. Shady somehow gets put in solitary confinement, and while the crew is eating lunch, they try to plot a way to break him out. We see Shady get a visitor from who I assume is supposed to be Kim, and he starts freestyling for a week straight apparently. I fucking hate you, I can't stand you, I'll rip your titties off and then I'll hand you. You're ugly, you won't hug me, you're dumb, you're stupid, I'm fat and lazy and crazy. You think I'm shady? I am shady, you stupid bitch. Take your silicone implants, now you got a slim chance of fucking with me ever again. I've got your silicone, you can't fuck with me, but I'm still alone in my cell. Mad as hell, might as well give you some more shit to sell. Meanwhile, Daryl is jonesing for any drug, and Ken says he can get them, but he needs to give the Arabian goggles to the Irish twins, some of the toughest boys in the prison. And if you don't know what Arabian goggles are, well, it's where a man puts his testicles over someone's eyes while they're sleeping, one testy per eye. Afterwards, Ken gathers the crew in their neon pink cell and comes up with two plans. One to start a drug ring, and one to get Shady out of confinement. The drugs come in, and Dave tells Daryl not to get high on his own supply. Rule number four. He says okay, but they have to worry about Robert Downey Jr. stealing them. He does actually steal them, which causes Daryl to get so mad he literally breathes fire at him and incinerates Robert Downey Jr. and snorts his ashes. 
Shady gets out of confinement during this and catches Daryl snorting the ashes and bans him from the crew for life. This is when they meet Knuckles, who is voiced by Exhibit and gets him in the crew instead and has him kill Daryl. Eventually, the gang's lawyer comes through and gets them all out of jail. Not Knuckles, though, sadly. Rip my brother Knuckles doing time in the pen. Hashtag free Knuckles sold backwards. Our next episode is titled Ouija Board Blunders and starts with the gang hanging at Marshall's house when he asks his aunt where the PlayStation is. She tells him it's in the closet, which ends up spilling out a bunch of stuff, but right on top of everything is a Ouija board which catches the gang's attention. They end up trying to summon new kids on the block, and it works. Then they summon Kurt Cobain, face half off, and start a band with him before going back to the Ouija board. Ken then used the board to summon Johnny Versace, who then takes the gang shopping for a new look. After they get done, Versace throws a Halloween party at the school, where he invites a bunch of people, including Madonna and John Stamos. The crew meets Stamos, who ends up being pretty cool with Shady, and asks him to set him up with the Olsen twins, which is where the episode ends. The next episode is titled Devirginization, and starts with Shady teaching the gang how to meet girls in online chat rooms. He sets up Marshall with a girl, and meanwhile, Dave takes a bong rip so hard it causes him to yak. Dave is literally me, by the way. Like, the Like, everything. The hair is kind of scary. Anyway, while puking, he notices mushrooms growing in the bathroom, and decides to lick them, and he starts tripping balls. He gets Marshall to do some also, who says he doesn't feel them, until he gets to his date that night. The girl tries to seduce him right at the table, but she looks like a monster to him, since he's tripping and freaks out. He runs out of the date, and the episode ends. The Ass and the Curious is the name of our next episode, and starts with Screech from Saved by the Bell fucking a sloth. Yep, seriously. To which the FBI catches him while they're performing a sting operation and blackmails him to work for them. We then cut to Shady and Big D watching Saved by the Bell ironically, and they try to figure out a way to move some mushrooms. Big D ends up bringing his little brother out claiming he can hide anything in his ass, and I gotta admit, this is probably the thing I found funniest in this show. It then cuts to a flashback of Big D and his little bro taking a bath together, and somehow his brother literally absorbs all the bath water in his ass. I literally just, I don't even know. They send him off and it works. Shady ends up with a fat pile of cash. That's when an undercover screech pulls up to the scene. Shady pretty much immediately can tell he's a narc and starts to ponder on how he can solve the solution. Meanwhile, Screech tries to infiltrate the gang through Sue, while Ken gets progressively jealous of the whole thing. Screech goes up to the gang at school while they're at the bake sale selling mushrooms on cupcakes, and Big D is about to beat him up when Shady stops him, coming up with an idea finally. To get in with the gang, they give him mushrooms to sneak into a concert like Big D's little brother, except Shady made sure the bag would break while inside of him. It does break, and he starts tripping, going crazy, runs right into the street, gets hit by a bus, and dies. The next episode is titled Parent Teacher Night, and is the original finale to the series. The episode starts in school with Sue and her dad meeting the teachers, and then for some reason, he just starts loving this guy because he's rich. We then see Big D pull up with his mom, and we see Shady there alone because he has no parents. Big D's dad also tries to show up, but then gets raided by the police. Marshall tries to wake up his mom, which isn't happening, so we then cut to Ken and find out the dude from earlier is his dad who's rich and gives Ken money to pretend not to be his son in public. We then cut to Dave's parents, who are the American Gothic, talking to his teacher when she straight up rats on Dave about the stuff he gets into with the gang. The rest of the episode is the teacher telling a story about how Dave and the gang once brought animals to school and they accidentally all got murdered, leading to a Scooby-Doo inspired investigation. There was also one bonus episode titled, The Lost Episode, and featured some even earlier animation takes and voices. Like, Dave has the same voice as Shady and Marshall in this one, and sometimes the wrong character will say the wrong line. The episode is pretty much just a different take on the Pristina Gagulera episodes, and I imagine this is the one they used to pitch the show probably. They wake up, get yelled at by Shady's mom for stealing her cigarettes, see the commercial on TV, and decide to go. And that, folks, is a wrap on The Slim Shady Show. Looking back, it's clear to see this is hella outdated now. My immediate reaction to a lot of this stuff is just, I guess that's just how it was back then, huh? I mean, I was literally being born shortly after these came out, so I don't have that experience of watching these as a teen or an adult while it was fresh. Luckily, we have the internet though. Here's an article from December 4th, 2001 by Entertainment Weekly, where they say this about the show. 
Add another barb to Eminem's multi-platinum tongue. The Slim Shady Show, a cartoon created by Eminem along with manager Paul Rosenberg and voiced by the rapper. This tromp through pop culture's flower bed, which originally appeared online, stars some of the same rabble-rousing posse from the Marshall Mathers LP. Alter Ego, Slim Shady, Marshall Mathers, Ken Kniff, and Dave. The gang takes bare knuckle jabs at performers Pristina Gaguera, Instinct, and movies like Goodwill Fronting. And it almost goes without saying that the tune does its best to degrade women, homosexuals, and just about anyone else who isn't a thug from Detroit. Unlike Eminem's innovative music, the Slim Shady Show's trailer trash talk is overly indebted to South Park. They even kill Kenny with a bong hit in one scene. But the most offensive thing about the show is that no one bothered to take the web animation and upgrade it to DVD quality. Ouch. But this seems to be the general take about this. Most reviews I've seen about this are Eminem's music was so innovative, clever, original. How could he have made this absolute trash? Well, he didn't make it. In the bonus features from the show, we get the story of how it was actually made, and M didn't have as much of a part in it as you think. Paul Rosenberg, who Eminem fans will know right off, but for those who don't, is his longtime manager, frenemy, and co-worker. Well, Paul revealed that MTV came to him discussing some sort of web animation they wanted to do with Eminem. Obviously, Eminem agreed to do this, but he didn't draw any animation. That was done by these two guys who I mentioned earlier. And he didn't make the theme song either. That was also made by these two guys. Eminem was only there to do the voices of Marshall, Shady, Ken, and some random people here and there. He wasn't even a writer on the show. They talk about going through a bunch of writers before finding the right one. We actually went through a slew of different writers. And, you know, it had to be high quality stuff. Matt got it and knew what we were trying to do with it. And honestly, I'm not sure if that makes it better or worse. While knowing Eminem didn't have as much to do with the show makes me feel better morally about liking him, it also just makes me feel like, damn, did he just do this for a bag? And if that's the case, I guess I can't really be mad, but it still stings a little. Regardless, Eminem fans will stay divided on this little piece of lore, while the mainstream will, well, just keep on forgetting it. Thanks to YouTube channel at Real Hip Hop, which has the whole show plus all the bonus episodes uploaded for free on YouTube. I have it linked in the description for all of you who want to check it out. I appreciate you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't, and comment what your thoughts are about the classic Slim Shady show. Is it a certified classic? Should it be buried underground never to see the light of the day again? I want to hear your thoughts in the comments below, and I will see you in the next look back on September 18th. Peace.